ladies and gentlemen we finally have Shajar and Cho here in Rise of Kingdoms and as you know we also have Ragnar Prime just on the horizon lots of new information coming out about Ragnar Prime as well and with all the discussion about new commanders a lot of people always have questions for me in the comments asking like hey should I save up for this commander should I invest in this commander is Ragnar Prime gonna be better than Liu Che there's so many people asking so many different questions and so what I thought I would do is make a video giving you guys guidelines on whether or not you should be investing in a new commander for your account I have six things and there might be more but these are six of the most important things that you have to consider when you're thinking about expertising a new commander so without further ado let's jump right into it but first what's going on guys cheers as you can see I am in my new apartment here I am still unpacking pretty much everything uh, I don't know if this is going to be the final setup here not a fan of the fact that you can see my bed because that means I'm going to have to make it for every video. But anyway, taking a look at Shajar here, it looks like she does have the skill tree. So I don't know what was going on there. She was announced to have the skill tree. And then when she came into the Chinese version of the game, she had the support tree. Now she's got the skill tree again. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, we got the skill tree on here, which is awesome. But these new commanders coming into the game, of course, the new Mightiest Governor is here, leads me to discuss a very quick and simple topic about whether or not you should be investing in a new commander right not just these new archers but in any new commander there's important things to consider and the first one is the most obvious so let's just get it out of the way if you're considering investing in a new commander do you have somebody to pair them with that is like number one okay when you're gonna fight in the open field you're not using just one commander you're using two commanders okay you have a primary and you have a secondary and so when you ask me hey Omniarch, should I invest in Shajar the question is do you have somebody to pair her with right if you're gonna invest in Ragnar Prime do you have somebody to pair him with in the case of Ragnar Prime at the time of recording this we actually don't know any of the numbers for his skills so it's like really hard to say regardless but if you don't have a commander that you can just easily pair with the new one that you're planning on investing in do you at least have enough sculptures to invest in and not only the new commander that you want but also somebody to pair them with right a lot of times what people do and especially very very patient free-to-play players is they will save up about 1400 legendary commander sculptures I know that's insane and they will invest in a whole pair of commanders and then as new commanders are released for that troop type then you can decide if you want to slot out one commander for a new one if it makes sense if it's a significant upgrade and if it's worth the extra sculptures so if you're asking me hey should I invest in a Shajar and the only commander that you have to pair her with is Yi Song Ye it's like maybe right maybe but that might not be the best first commander to be expertising if you're going into season of conquest right if, if the only archer you have is Yi Ye, you're probably just entering kbk3 for the first time she might not be your best choice so always be aware of the meta and what commanders pair well together of course i have tons of videos on the channel talking about the best commanders and the meta commanders in rise of kingdoms check them out on the channel and if you miss them and you don't want to miss the next ones consider subscribing and dropping a thumbs up on this video okay the second thing you have to consider when you ask yourself should I invest in a new commander or a new pair of commanders is do you have the equipment to field that commander right if you are let's say you're running three commander pairs right now and you're considering adding a fourth pair of commanders right you're going to start fielding with four armies the question shouldn't just be do you have the sculptures to expertise that commander and do you have a commander to pair them with but also do you have the gear to start fielding that army right maybe you're going to dismantle some other pieces hopefully not legendaries you should never dismantle legendaries but maybe you can dismantle some purple pieces from you know other commanders or you know peacekeepers something like that or maybe you've been saving up equipment material pieces and blueprints for this very moment whatever the case might be you want to have a set of equipment that is good enough to fight in the open field and that doesn't mean that it has to be all legendary gear right a lot of people like to say that you know you need a full set of legendary gear to fight in the end game and that's just not true obviously it would be ideal right but like if if you're not gonna play the game until you have full legendary gear like you're gonna miss out ideally you'll probably want to have at least like two maybe three pieces of legendary equipment when you're considering building or, or, or branching out into a fourth or fifth army you can fill in the rest with some purples or in the case of you know like the gatekeeper shield that's a decent blue piece 
piece we also have uh the blue piece for cavalry the helmet piece here is great those are two of like the main blue pieces that people like to use well into the end game of course if you're looking at things like Karox humility the purple legs for infantry those are fine you can use those you can field with those in the end game with the special talent and ideally you want to put something in the accessory slots it's not required to have legendary accessories honestly silent trial with the talent is great you're reducing the enemy's rage and of course ancient stratagems is also great I mean more troops in the battlefield means more damage or you can just use call of the loyal with the special talent and just get yourself some more March speed until you're able to get your hands on a better piece for that accessory slot but the point is you want to have a set of gear that is decent not best in slot everything you don't need to wait that long but decent to fight in the open field there's no point in investing in a new commander or in a new commander pairing if you just don't have the gear for it right now the third thing that you need to have before you invest in a new commander and this is very obvious and in the same vein as the last point armaments okay armaments are very important for your army and so if you're going to consider investing in a new commander and possibly adding a fourth or fifth army to your lineup then you have to make sure that you have decent armaments for that commander and right now this is actually more important now than ever because we see a bit of a variation in some of the armaments that people might be using right so the circle formation could possibly be the best in slot uh armament for the brand new archers right we have Cho and we have Shajar both of them function based off of mighty healing they deal true damage based on their heal strength which includes any bonuses right so this is more important now than ever with these new commanders but no matter who you're investing in it's important to know that you should have decent armaments for that army and again just like with the equipment with your gear you don't need best in slot everything right you don't need to have five inscriptions just to run an armament set right it would be nice but it's just not practical because these of course are based on RNG right like they're random and so there's not much you could do besides use transmutation stones and things like that and be smart about it but I would say you probably want to have at least like six or seven percent of stats for attack defense and health that's a very rough low ball sort of estimate and of course you know if you have all damage then that counts more than just stats right I would say all damage is probably worth two to three X what the stat equivalent would be depending on the commander pairing and it also depends on of course your inscriptions as well some of these inscriptions give you bonus stats right like two and a half percent health three and a half percent health things like that so in general you know you want a decent amount of each stat you want to focus mostly on health and defense of course all damage is great March speed is okay if the armament has it and it's the best you can do then you know that's that's a nice little bonus as important as March speed is I tend to focus more on stats for my armaments than March speed I try to get my March speed from the commanders themselves and from like the boots the equipment things like that but yeah a nice chunk of stats for health defense and attack as well really going to go a long way and if you can get your hands on some inscriptions that's even better the fourth thing that you need to consider when investing in a new commander is do you have the resources is to field that commander effectively in kvk and this might sound a little bit obvious but i think this is something that a lot of people don't really think about when they think about investing in a commander they think about do i have legendary commander sculptures and then they think about do i have a pairing form and maybe some gear right that seems to be like the top three things uh, but i really want to make sure you guys at least consider the fact that you need to make sure that you have enough resources to field that army especially if you're adding an additional army to your lineup right so if you've been running three armies and you're considering adding a fourth or if you've been running four and you're adding a fifth etc hopefully that heat pump wasn't too loud for you guys I didn't realize how loud it was throughout the recording maybe you guys couldn't even tell but I shut it off anyway for example if you were previously running three armies and now you're running four that's a 33 percent increase in the number of resources that you're going to need just by adding that additional army right assuming that you field it as often as you field the others and depending on the troop type that the new commander pairing is going to be you have to consider what resources you might actually need of course if you're adding an additional infantry army that's going to use more food and wood if you're adding an additional cavalry army I'm pretty sure it's food and stone and archers are wood and stone I never pay attention to those I could have got it backwards but regardless you know what I'm saying and in any case you're mainly going to need more gold to fund that new army now it's the case that a lot of players can and often will supplement some of their army capacity with tier four units to reduce their healing costs that's something that you can 
consider I do that for sure especially in like King's land and near the end of KBK but if you have an idea as to how many resources you spent in your last KBK or maybe two KBKs then think about how many more resources you might need to add an additional army to your lineup and if you don't think it is possible or feasible to get your hands on that on those resources then it might not make sense to immediately go ahead and invest in a new commander pairing you might want to wait a little bit maybe develop another farm account or something like that because there's no point in investing in a commander and all the gear and everything if you can't really feel them there's a whole economic perspective behind all of this and I think that's what a lot of people forget in the same vein as this moving on to number five you also want to make sure that you have enough troops to field that army and you don't necessarily need to only field it with tier five of course that would be nice but that's very expensive especially for free-to-play players unless you've got like you know six farm accounts but it's important to at least have enough troops to field it with ideally a 50 percent troop expansion if not a 25 percent troop expansion and then some extras beyond that because likely some of your troops are going to die and you're going to fill your hospital and things along those lines for kvk fighting so you probably want to have at least like 400,000 units of a particular troop type and then you multiply that by how many armies of that troop type you're going to be running so right now if you're only running one of each troop type you have three armies then ideally you'd want 400,000 or more of of each of those troop types but if you're going to add an additional infantry army well then you probably want to have at least 800,000 of of infantry units right something along those lines and uh, these are just like very rough I'm just pulling these numbers out of my head as napkin math based on like 50 percent expansions and you know depending on our VIP level and everything like that it, it does fluctuate a lot sometimes you're not going to need that many sometimes you'll want to have much more especially if you're going to be stuffing rallies and stuffing garrisons like that's going to really eat into your troop reserves and so if you don't have enough troops to field an additional army of that troop type then it's like are you are you going to be able to train them before kbk and if so is that going to affect the amount of resources that you have to field them in kbk when your hospitals get full these are things that you have to consider as well if you're running super low on resources and you're pretty low on troops then it's like you you might not even really get the most benefit out of that additional army if you invest in that new commander right now and the final thing that i want to talk about here and this one is is very important this comes down to when is the next release of that commander's troop type likely going to be so right now we are just seeing Cho and Shajar come into the game I might be mispronouncing his name I apologize if I am but these commanders are about to land on rise of kingdoms and so right now it's a good time to invest in Archer commanders because typically the way rise of kingdoms has worked historically is that they release new commanders in a certain order for different troop types right so next we will likely see either ranged in leadership or cavalry that's most likely going to be the next set and so right now it's a great time to invest in archers because you know that you have the longest period of time until these new commanders could possibly be power crept by something better and in the same vein as that it's probably a really bad time to invest in cavalry units or ranged in leadership units right now right because we know those are coming up it's one or the other for the next release cycle so if you were asking yourself oh should I invest in Nevsky or should I invest in William the first like right now might be a good time to actually hold off on those commanders because we could be seeing new cavalry coming down the pipeline pretty soon and that's especially true again with range um if you're thinking about investing in like Margaret for example like she could be power crept within the next couple of months and so it might not be worth investing in her so always pay attention to the release window of these commanders and when you're about to go into kvk you know if you're thinking oh it would be nice to have an additional cavalry march look online check out my channel or, or chiskel or whoever else other rise of kingdoms creator that you like um check out their videos to see okay when was the last time we saw a new cavalry commander right how long has it been uh are we due for one and if we are maybe you don't invest in in that commander right now because a new one could be coming down the pipeline now that's not to say that all the old commanders are bad and in fact a lot of the commanders that I run in the open field are relatively old commanders right now I currently run Guan Yu with CPO Prime I run Alexander Nevsky with William the first these are commanders from 2020 2021 right like these are pretty old commanders they're from years ago and so it's not always the case that the new commanders are just objectively better in every way than the old commanders so you know it, this isn't like a hard stop rule but if you want to play it safe especially considering how expensive you know and how rare legendary commander sculptures are then you probably should you know at least wait give it a little bit of time to see uh, when the next commander release is and if that might be a better choice for you and of course if you want up-to-date information about when brand new commanders are announced teased revealed and put into rise of kingdoms then you definitely should subscribe 
subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are these six things things that you consider before you invest in a new commander? Are there things that I missed? Things that I didn't think about or talk about in this video that you should think about when investing in a new commander? If so, put them in the comment section below. It could help somebody else out. And while you're down there, drop a thumbs up on the video. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Pooch. Gotta go back to unpacking now. I'm so tired.